Hey, welcome to the studio. Diana here today with um, the other part of this tag along book. And in this video, I will be constructing that little book. I'll put a card up in the corner that shows how I decorated that. I believe that was uh, maybe last week's video. So here I've got my my math. I'm kind of saying that in quotes, but <laughs> there's kind of a formula that I will have posted up on my blog. Now the size of this piece of paper, this brown paper bag, I wanted I cut it down to 12 and an, uh, 12 and a half inches in height by 31 inches long and that gives enough pages when it's all folded up and height to contain uh, I forget what the size of the tag is but I'll, I'll list all this stuff over at my blog and um, so now right now I'm just trying to figure out how high this is going to be and uh, I did want to show you I do have my big ruler there on the side because I was showing you how you can man more manageably cut this large piece of paper down. So the way I did it was first to cut it down and around and then fold it in half and cut it to size. So I'm still looking at my measurements, at, or I'm looking at them again. <laughs> I don't trust myself. Um, there's my tag, and I just want to make sure that I have enough uh, space at the top and the bottom to fold it up three inches and fold it down two inches. So you can see that beautiful decorated paper uh, from Natalie Kalbeck's Versailles art foamy in the other video and I'm just sort of giving a pinch at the middle of the folded area and now I'm giving a, just a a good pinch and make sure that that those edges meet up it's um, it's sort of a lazy lazy person's folding but it works perfectly it's just the way I do hems as well uh, without having to measure the whole doggone thing but you are certainly welcome to measure that whole doggone thing if you'd like and now I'm just measuring down and um, found my spot find your spot and uh, do the same thing pin give a pinch after you're pretty sure where you want that uh, give a pinch and then just uh, make sure that your edges are are jived up on each end and um, go ahead and I, I will have more tips on cutting this paper I'm assuming everybody has paper cutters in this day and age uh, if anybody wants to you know what if anybody's doing it the old-fashioned way with an exacto though uh, you find your your straight edge find your straight edge um, on the paper and um, mark down from there you know what if anybody wants that let me know and I will include instructions for that and now I'm matching up the edges because I'm going to fold this in half I'm going to begin the folds for the for the fold book using my I, uh, what's that thing called oh it's a bone folder or your knife or whatever you've got uh, butter knife works just fine and this is a simple book uh, that is uh, I think the fold book's been around for an awful long time and this kind of little folder is also been around for an awful long time I'm going to try to always fold the end toward the middle. Now, I just was checking the amount of space I had there, and on this book, I didn't. I I wanted to add a little bit more space, so I added a couple of inches for you guys. Mine came up a, just not short but tight. Here 
You might have to unfold it and refold or something, but always try to use that uh, what we call a mountain fold to fold up to and uh, that just keeps things more even. It's not going to be perfect folks. This is a brown paper bag and um, one you probably carried your groceries home in. So it's not about perfection anyway. This has a really funky kind of uh, lived in look that I really love and with the elegance of that gold. Oh I did put um, I think later on I can see that I have some stenciling there and now you can uh, I have some stenciling on the opposite side of the decorations and now I have a thick piece of washi tape I was just showing you that washi tape um, just to dress up the insides a little bit I believe that's a Heidi Swap uh, washi tape that is that thick but don't worry about it anything will work and I also would have liked to sew this uh, but my machine broke at some point and uh, it, uh, probably not a good idea to try to sew over tape and now I just have washi at the ends to keep things from falling out the end of each piece and I'm just I folded it halfway I laid the tape halfway and then just cut it and um, give it a fold I loved washi tape on four edges of things I've made a lot of books where I put washi tape on the four edge of the papers and it really looks beautiful from from that side of the book and plus it's a nice little way to get yourself some more interest to the book and something on that page. So you can see that I have it all folded up here and I did try to sew and now I'm thinking about putting tape into the in between and you can see how I'm tight there but what I did to solve this was used an exacto just to cut uh, just that pocket to the end of the book. So uh, through the washi tape, I just trimmed through the washi tape. But the three inches should give you um, enough. The extra three inches should give you enough space. Yeah, if you have a sewing machine, I would definitely uh, recommend stitching along these folds. Or you don't even have to worry about anything at all. They're 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 not going to be rocking around but I, I just sort of liked the extra uh, decoration of and so I took some very skinny washi tape and I left the edges long in many cases so that it would wrap around the other side just straighten it out and then going all along the folds and I would recommend uh, putting a little bit of glue at the ends of the washi tape and in the middle there so like right there I would put a little bit of glue and there at the end and then in the middle area uh, on the flip side there I am just cutting off my stitching Now I have the multi-media mat from Ranger. I think you could use any kind of mat medium on this. It comes in this teeny wee bottle and I just fill it up with, frankly, whatever. Uh, Tombow works really fine. I have a tiny little uh, different cap on that. Uh, yeah, that little needle's always coming out, so I just jam it back in. I think it's a quilling bottle. Uh, cap and that that works really well for these tiny little places and uh, you can see me just lifting up the uh, washi tape in the middle there. That medium was empty so I'm using my what's it called glossy accents. They're both really good uh, adhesives uh, and I like these bottles I'll list them below. They really makes for a very convenient application. 
So here we have the little book all finished and uh, you can see I've got my tags all tucked away in there and I, I you can also see right here where I trimmed that washi tape uh, just so that the pocket was completely open as I said because uh, a little short I wished I'd had a couple more inches but that is factored into your uh, numbers now and you might need to un, you know open and reverse a fold here and there as you close up the book I did want some kind of a closure on this and decided that ribbon would be nice and let me show you how I did that you can see the last page of the book I just punched a little hole in there and threaded the ribbon through it and glued it down to wrap it up. I also wanted a closure which I did wind up with. It took me a little messing around. I had that wood chip and a button that I glued together. Um, I'll put the glue I used down below because uh, the button gave the wood chip enough height space in between the book and the chip to wrap that ribbon around. So I just glued those together and then glued it onto the front of the book and I think it's adorable. I love all those ribbons and stuff sticking out of the top and I hope you enjoyed it too. I decided to call it the tag along making a reference to a Gwen Dine's gypsy wagon and also a reference to what is inside so give me thumbs up if you like this video I hope you make a lot of these little books I'll have more photos on my blog bye now